Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today I have a very simple card project taking a stencil and using it, I guess a little differently than it was intended and just making a funky random shape topping it with a very simple greeting. Don't overthink your designs. Just keep it simple, layer some things together, see what shakes out. This card was also featured on the Simon Says Stamp blog, so I'll drop a link below in the description box if you want to check out that blog post. Let's get into the card project coming up next. Today we're going to create a very simple shape stenciled background top it with a simply stamped and die cut greeting, maybe add a little shine and we are good to go. So let's jump in and take a look at the products I'm using today. The stencil set I'll be using is called Oblique Spheres. Now you can line them up just like you see in the package, but I'm gonna have a little fun with this. I picked some warm colors here, some nice pinks, oranges into yellow, and I'm going to top it with a big old greeting. So. Those are the basics plus some blender brushes and cardstock. To get started, I cut apart some of my Tim Holtz Media Grip Map pieces to use in conjunction with this tonic map that I like to work on. Cut them down, right? They're going to hold things in place for me while I work. And I'm storing them inside the cardstock sleeves from Simon Says Stamp. All you do is cut off the sides and then you can keep these stored so they stay nice and tidy while you're not using them. You place them down on your surface and now my mat itself is a little slippy so I thought what would happen if I took a larger piece, put it down on my main work mat and just stuck it down and you know what? It holds it in place so the mat doesn't slide as much. My table moves because it's 115 years old but the mat, that's not going anywhere. I've got a panel of cardstock. This is just a four and a quarter by five and a half piece and I'm going to start with the first stencil that is the full circle. And again, you can use these as designed, but I just thought I'm going to make a wonky background with this. So holding it into place with the magnets that come with this tonic mat. And I thought I would mask off the sides just to protect the cardstock because I wasn't quite sure where I was going. But see how that little piece of grip mat holds the pad in place? I just think that's brilliant. So now I can blend on, right? Coming in with this beautiful yellow. And this is all we're doing. We're making simple blended shapes and we're going to overlap. This is a very easy way to kind of get into ink blending because stencils give you this nice little contained area. And as long as you stay similar on the color wheel, meaning colors that go into other colors, the results are gonna be great. So we're going into the next color, which is orange, and that's the cantaloupe. And this is the second largest sphere in the set. And again, a little darker at the bottom, blending it out to be a little lighter at the top. And we have got shape number two. I really didn't know what it was gonna look like when it was all done. I knew the colors would work, but I wasn't sure about these shapes. So I just kept going. I brought in the carnation ink. This is the lighter of the two pinks that I chose. And again, just overlapping and blending and seeing what happens, you know? Kind of, it's kind of like a science experiment, but it ends up turning into a card instead of like a potion. Then I brought in the darker color. This is the peony, a gorgeous, gorgeous deep pink, overlapping and blending. I decided to bring in that little shape one more time. I wiped down the stencil to bring in the sunbeam one more time because I like to have an odd number of shapes. And that is the panel so far. Had no idea where we were going, but I thought let's get a greeting that would work really well. And I love thank you cards. That is a card that I send a lot. So all we're doing is stamping a simple greeting. This is the Nina Solar White Classic Crest in the 110 pound. I'll ink up the stamp with the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black. Now this is a brand new stamp that I've never used before, so the transfer wasn't perfect the first time, and this is why I love the Misty tool. You just ink it up and stamp it again and press. I inked it up a third time off camera just to get it as dark as possible and then we were ready for die cutting. 
I taped the coordinating die into place to cut out. The sandwich I've been using lately on the Gemini, two clear cutting plates, and then on the inside, I used two of the green, I think they're called double-sided die cutting plates. But I love the rotating design board from Totally Tiffany. It comes with a little clip on it, but you take the clip off, just unclip it, and it is the perfect little place for your die cut machine, so you never have to lift it. Look at that. Very simple greeting. Then I'll take my ink blended panel, kind of visualize what I think the card's going to look like, and I just used one of my A2 layers dies to cut out this panel, again, running it through the Gemini. Love the rotation there so I don't have to pull it away from the wall. It's great if you have limited space, right? And pop it out, and that's the general design. Love it. I'm going to take that same grip media mat and put my USA 2 card base down because sometimes the mat throws my eye off, so I think this is going to be really cool for popping down my card panels. I really need to clearly see all the sides, right? Popping that down, and then we're going to pop on the greeting. I've got foam squares on the back here. I'll add a little bit of liquid glue, and I decided to flip around the design that I stenciled like this because I thought that had a really nice asymmetrical look and then I just finished it off with three sequins up top and three at the bottom which also created this reflected symmetry. See how they're arranged in a mirror image but it's flipped? Love that. Little glue and boop and slide. Pop those sequins down. I love the silver confetti style sequins because they add just the right amount of neutral shine and you are good to go. Boop. There we go. And that is the finished card project. So a very simple idea. You don't always have to stamp and emboss your greeting. You can go really simple like this, create your own background pattern with a stencil, and it will look different every time. You can find all of the supplies that I used in today's video linked below in the YouTube description box. I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.